guys this week on awesome cast rob's got an iphone 5 we're going to talk all about it the apple maps problem facebook privacy do blackberry and myspace even have a chance and so much more this week on awesome cast Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast number 120. Back at you again from the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. I am the uh, master of podcasting here, uh, Michael Sorg, uh, ready to roll again with me. Uh, as usual, is Rob De La Creta. How you doing, Hi. Rob? Hi. The cynical beast himself. I need a. I, I gotta figure out how to work that into like a license plate. Into a license plate? Yeah. Cynical. Yeah, that could be. That could, yeah. that could be interesting. It'd also, be like really misconstrued. Also joining with us on the couch this week is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin dot com. How are you doing this week? This week, every week. This week, so most weeks. You say every. You say this week, every week. Usual weeks. This week, you are on the couch. I'm always on the couch. Well, the couch is in a different place. You know, you never know. Sometimes we covered that last floor. week. I mean, like, yeah. Okay. Man. Anyways, this is the awesome Come cast. Back behind me. <laughs> Where it didn't you? work. Oh, sheet failure. He's, sheet he's failure. having he's having issues with the new set here. Um, so there you go. It's horrible. You broke it. I, I broke it. You now you broke it even worse. <laughs> I got rid of it. You said screw this. There, gone. All right, that's not so bad. I got a blanket if I need one later. Except for those random boxes back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the awesome cast where we'd like to talk deck, and there'll be a lot of phone stuff, of course, this week. With hey, there's some stuff that came out this week, and somebody may have their hands on one. Uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, if you uh, if you want to find out more about us, we're over at awesomecast.com. Doesn't work too well right now. We're working on that. Can't figure it out. Uh, uh, what, what's the happening there? Uh, it's uh, well, the site is there. It's just um, none, and the posts are there. Oh yeah, they are. And they're there. There's just nothing in the posts for oh, everybody yeah. else. You broke it. So I don't know. I don't know what happened here. So if anybody knows WordPress and knows why uh, my content, it's there when I go into WordPress and look at the post where I can edit it, but it's not there for everybody else. So that's a WordPress issue. It's also affecting Chachi says dot net. Sorry, Chachi. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> you okay? Over there? He's like taking clothes off. What's I am going on. Warm. I wore pants. <laughs> Um, Thought it was gonna get cold. But yeah, if, if, awesomecast.com, at least you'll find all the links and uh, to contact connect with us and check out the, the show on, uh, we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube, we're on Blip TV, we're on Roku Boxes via the Blip TV app, Stitcher as well, so please go check that out. We're also, also at Awesomecast, at Awesomecast, I'm sorry, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on uh, the Google Pluses. So uh, so go go communicate there and uh, and hashtag us AC120 for this episode if uh, if it's related to that. Uh, so let's get right into it. Rob, I understand you got a new toy. I did. I got a thing. You got a thing. You got, got a thing. thing. Can you tell us about your thing? It's tiny. It's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the uh, the iPhone five. Okay. In uh, in black. Um, 16, I don't even pay attention to how much space is on it anymore. 16 gig. Oh my God, it's streaming. I've, I have yet in my lifetime to fill an iPhone. I usually fill it with apps and video, like like that I take. Yeah, I don't shoot any video, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Or pictures. And I, or uh, I never have a ton of apps either. I'm pretty quick. To, like If I don't, don't like an app or if I'm not using an app, I'll get rid of it pretty quickly. I tend to stockpile games, mm. You know whether I play them or not. Which is a bad thing because those are usually the largest thing you can stick on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so far I'm, I'm extremely happy with it. Uh, I say this is somebody who had an iPhone 3G, an iPhone 4, and then I went from a 4 to a 5. I also, you know, work with all the Apple stuff all the time. But uh, key things that I'm exceedingly in love with about are. Uh, so the joke is, you know, it's an Apple product. So the lighter end is thinner, right? Yeah. But no, we're not kidding. It's actually a lot lighter. So much so, it feels like it's nothing in my pocket, which is kind of concerning. So, yeah. Well, that's an interesting problem because I know I usually have that, uh, you know, that issue where it's like, well, 
you ever get the fam- phantom vibration or that you double check? Oh, yeah. You know, now yeah. it's going to be like, is it there? Right. And that's exactly what it is. Because I have, like, if you, if you see the pair of jeans that I wear all the time, there's a spot in my front right hand pocket. It's an iPhone shaped. And, uh, and that's where I keep my phone. And the whole time and I've had this for the last, um, for the last, well, I got, you know, I got on Friday. Um, I keep having to like slap my pocket to make sure that it's actually there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, as everybody kind of expected, you know, because it's a half inch, I think, physically bigger, uh, it makes absolutely no difference in the way that you hold your hand because it's not wider. It's not like, like one of those fancy Samsung devices that is painfully large to show in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, the screen is more naturally just kind of the uh, since your thumb is happy to travel from top to bottom. Uh, the only way that you'll notice, like it, it feels weird to do this. You're looking at the video feed, it's just I have it like in the cross of my palm and then my index finger over the top, which I'll do if I'm like if I'm in a crowd of people and I'm dropping my phone. That is how I hold my phone, and that's when you're like, oh well, I've got to stretch my finger a whole lot more to make this. Happen. Uh, um, Finish on it was really nice, but uh, yeah, the, the the weight thing is weird. When I first got it, uh, and I got it at my studio, uh, uh, two other people in my studio, the first thing they they did was they picked up my phone. And they're like, "Wow, it doesn't feel real." And when you actually like you hold an iPhone four with uh, an iPhone five's record, and you're like, "No, this is light. This isn't bad." And then you hold the iPhone five, and the iPhone four feels like a wreck. Mm-hmm. Like it feels super heavy, and also the. Uh, the uh what are we calling this horrible thing the light connector right uh it's really tiny it's tinier than you think it is is the other thing like the second thing everybody says is oh my gosh i thought that the connector was going to be quite as big as it actually is it it's so tiny it's ridiculous in comparison um phone itself is lightning fast lightning fast actually if you want to get nerdy um, a friend of ours works at a super computing center. Uh, and if you're familiar with, um, doing technical benchmarks, technical benchmarks like computers, uh, you are familiar with the Linpack benchmark, uh, uh, which I'll run another one real quick here. And, and I'm currently operating at 607 megaflops with an average of 575 megaflops. And I have full LTE coverage. All over the city. The only place I don't have it in my basement. <laughs> so and I had like I had no idea how fast this would be. This is now faster than the line of my video. That seems to be what a lot of people are saying that it, it, it's faster than any any hardline copper in anybody's house. They were tested it on. Uh, I, I was watching some stuff on Twitter today, and they did a speed test. Accidentally had it on Wi-Fi, and it was like what they said only eight megs or something like that, or only five megs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, so, it, 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 somebody told me, uh, I, I think somebody in the past week that's an Android person says, no, when you go LTE, you're not going to want to go back. Is it really, th- like, when you're just using the phone and regular applications, is that noticeably snappier? Yeah. Okay. Like, you don't realize it, but you're used to little things. Like, when you open Safari, and, and I'm going to just do it while I'm talking about it, and you go to type in the search box in Safari. Mm-hmm doing the uh, the autofill thing and you're used to it taking a second to catch up to what you're typing. But yeah. The longer it takes a second. Now is that is that processor doing that or is that actual hitting the internet? That's uh, hitting the internet in okay. a large uh, um, it's I mean it's actually a combination of all the above but it, and also on top like the Safari has been plenty fast for a long time. Give Safari a piping hot can and it will take Every bit of that that can. Okay. Uh, but Safari on LTE is just it's it's ridiculous. As long as you're browsing like major websites, like your mom's cooking blog, it might suck a little bit. Yeah. But for the most part, like you hop on, you know, pump into Google and you, remember back on the dial, you got used to those like ticks that you would do waiting for a page to load. Yeah. And then you got cable, and you realized you no longer had time to do the stupid stuff that you did. I tended to I tended to right click a lot was my nervous tick. Yeah, yeah. Everybody had a thing. And I like now I'm noticing that I would I would think like like sort of just like pull the page a little bit mm-hmm. and watch it bounce back back up while I was waiting for it to And now it's immediate. If I grab a page, look. 
in maybe two seconds. Mm. It sounds. It sounds like maybe we should put your Skype feed on the LTE from the looks of it, of things. Probably, if you want, we can do a quick. Uh, here, we'll, we'll do a quick speed test because it's just funny. Let's see here. The viewers at home, I'm using the speedtest.net application. Mm-hmm. If I can get all my stuff in this thing, the thing we're going to go on. All right. Wow. Maxing out the download and maxing out. Does it say 14? I don't the most result I've gotten yet. Alright. You know why? <laughs> you know what's really funny? Forgot to take my Wi Fi off my uh, list here. That's, so what now, every, that's what everybody seems to do. Now that you tested my Wi Fi, let me turn that off. <laughs> okay, so, uh, on my home Wi Fi, I'm on comp. I have 14 down and 3.32 up. Now I'm on LP. All right, we'll do this again. Find the button, the button. And... He's actually showing us this for uh, anybody on audio there. So we're going to be up again. We're in 16. Looks like. Uh, it's pretty slow. Yeah, that's 16 down and 9 up. And my average 20 down and 21 up. Wow. Hey, it depends on where you're at. It depends on how many people are out there using it. Maybe this time of day, uh, there's probably more people in the area using uh, on, on the LTE. Um, so I, that's uh, that's pretty significant. Really fast, yeah. It's kind of annoyingly uh, really, really fast. The, uh, oh, and the headphones. People were yelling at me on the internet about the headphones. The uh, the headphones seem really dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're going to make you hate every pair of headphones that you currently have. <laughs> so don't drop the 30 bucks to get myself a new pair. Uh, yeah, you probably should, really. It's actually, it's, there's the uh, there's a new app. Char. The new, work. I'm it's sorry, you cut now. What was that? The new Apple commercials. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, where they're, um, where they're talking about the shape of your ear. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just like, it's kind of simple. But they're total, it, it, total bragging is what it is, where they're just saying, like, how do you figure this out? If you look at an ear, what shape is that? It's not a circle. So why would you make headphones that are a circle? Headphones should be ear fit. So we made these, and you're going to buy it. <laughs> you know, they actually lined up pretty well with the commercial that we're playing. <laughs> and then there's, uh, there's the, the thumb one, which is like they just show you a hand. And they say your thumb goes from here to here. And it's just going from like the bottom of your pinky to the top of your index finger. And then they just put a phone in. And you're like, thumb goes from here to here. Now, that could be a crazy coincidence, or it could be science. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, actually, it's just Apple playing catch up again. Is it catch up again, though? <laughs> My thumb, my thumb has always been able to go from the bottom of my screen to the top of my screen. No, no, no that's not. That, but you're not the one they're talking about. They're talking about the people like you know that have the four inch, cra- five inch crazy phones from Android. Can that you know a lot of them admit it is, is a little big to, to hold. Yeah. So that's what they're competing with. This isn't like a catch up thing. This isn't you know all the regular phones because everybody's everybody's like, well, the phones the the screen's not as big. As the other ones, but all these people that want big phones, I, I kind of more I think about, it, I just like I want a phone that's phone size. If I want something bigger, I'll get you know a Nexus or something or a Mac Mini if that comes out. You know what I mean? Um, I, I get like getting the bigger screen at least a little bit in what they did. They did it in a way that makes sense. At least mm-hmm. they say, hey, movies will play correctly on this. Brave yeah. is going to look fantastic. Why not? You know, a widescreen ratio now, which just makes sense. And, and, and I really hope they don't do this with the iPad because anytime I've picked up a uh, tablet that's widescreen and 16:9 ratio, it feels awkward to me. It doesn't feel like well, it's like great I can watch movies on this, but it doesn't feel like I should be. Um, it doesn't. It, it doesn't feel like I should be you know doing computer things on this thing. You know. Yeah. So I I don't know. It, 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 I'm okay. I'm okay with the iPad shape. You know. 
uh, when I watch old Star Trek episodes, it's the perfect shape for it. So, uh, uh, and speaking of of Apple playing catch up, the other point I'd like to make is uh, remember back in the day when everybody would like. There was a period where the easy thing to make fun of on the iPhone was that it didn't have 4G. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, everything else has 4G. Why doesn't Apple have 4G? And it goes into the um, same reason they couldn't do copy and paste for a while is because they weren't at the way that copy and paste was being done. Yeah. And, the one was better. and like the reason that they didn't have LTE, which they permitted to, was because it killed battery. And it totally did. And it does. On many and most devices that currently have 4G or LTE, it sucks your battery. I have better battery life on this running LTE all the time than I did on my iPhone 4. Running 3G all the time. Running 3G all the time. Now, there's a little bit of controversy there because um, one thing they, they were saying that that you cannot do data and voice at the same time. Is that correct? I, I, or maybe it's on certain versions of the phone. If I, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. I, I think I think it's on the Verizon ones because, of course, with the CDMA version of them, like all the previous iPhones, you, like CDMA does not support that. But because of the way LTE is, I guess LTE, the chip itself, only does the data, and your voice is still running on the old network. Like, well, what I'm curious, so like, if I lose LTE, I get 4G. Okay. So I'd be curious where my voice ends up if I'm doing data over LTE. Okay. Whether it's like running 3G or whatever else. It, hmm. But it sounds like all they did was they didn't include the extra antenna because I guess other phones like what the Samsung Galaxy or something can do that. But it sounds like it was a choice for, again, like kind of the battery size side of yeah. things. Um, but yeah, it's great battery life, it's super fast. It is, uh, if you want to get nerdy again, it is the fastest phone um for processing JavaScript, currently available by long stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, and, oh, hey, well, we have to talk about, you know. Which part? <laughs> we have to talk about Apple Maps. Uh, you know, before, uh, before that, I want to finish with the other uh, odd hardware thing that came up uh, with, the, with the actual phone itself. Uh, this came out. And then we'll get to maps. Trust me, I have some stuff on, on maps here to talk about. Uh, so Verizon iPhone, apparently, if you if you pick up a Verizon iPhone 5, it's completely unlocked. It can be used freely on GSM networks. Um, it has a SIM card. Uh, of course, you know, I, they don't, I guess they don't use SIM cards for Verizon itself, from what I understand. But, of course, you know, GSM stuff like T-Mobile, AT&T, stuff around the world can. So you can easily take a Verizon iPhone 5 and take it around the world. Put it on another service if you bought it on, you know, completely off contract or on contract, whatever you wanted to do with it. Um, and they said they're not, they're not, this isn't a, an error or anything. This is just how that phone is. And it seems to be the only one that has this ability. Um, is it that they have, uh, uh, so if I sign up for a two year contract on Verizon and I buy an iPhone 5, how much does it cost me? Probably, uh, well, I don't think that option is out yet, for one thing. Oh, okay. Because it's usually a couple weeks before they they release the unlocked ones because they want to make sure all the contract people get their pre-orders in first, I think. So I so we'll see how much that is, but it should be around. Uh, I, I was looking at iPhone 4s around about before these everything else was released, and it was about $550. Uh, so this is probably about the same thing. Okay. But... Hmm. Um, but uh, that's an interesting, you know, option, at least for people to consider. I mean, people can easily, you know, pick one of these up and, you know, whatever they do with their contract, get it unlocked. This is a source you can get them unlocked. You can bring them right over to something like, uh, uh, AT&T, T-Mobile when they get their, their stuff together. Um, of course, uh, the, the 3G will work on the other bands. The LTE will not. Huh. So I guess the LTE is on a different frequency, much like kind of the problem AT&T and T-Mobile have had until recently, where oh, T-Mobile, of course, is just rolling out in a, a lot of cities um, uh, the 3G spectrum that will, is compatible with AT&T's iPhone. Uh, because, you know, we talked about before, they're trying to get you to bring your unlocked iPhone over to it, which I know, uh, you know, some people like chill in the chat room already do. So, um, so I, I think... It going into the maps, Rob, I think this picture really kind of sums it up. Uh, here's a picture of Fry from Futurama. Not sure if Drunk Driver or is using Apple's maps. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> Which, have you been using it? Have you been driving around with Apple Maps much? I've been using Apple Maps for uh, two or three months. Okay. Haven't had one problem. Haven't had one problem. Now, did you, how much tra- No, you do travel. You're, you're going to different cities. So, I mean, you, sh- you should have a pretty significant experience with that. Three different cities. Okay. I've used it in uh, Pittsburgh, obviously. I've used it in uh, San Diego, and I've used it in Kansas City. Not a single problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, and, of course, I think AJ's been on the show saying he's been using it, you know, again, like you would think in the beta, and then he's been having trouble bouncing around the Carolinas, uh, Virginia, I think. Um, and uh, what's that? There's an important thing to understand about Apple Maps. It's one of those things, like, remember uh, remember Antenna Gate? Yeah. Uh, remember how that wasn't actually a big problem, but everybody made it a problem because somebody they knew told them that it was a problem? Yes. Same thing is happening. Same thing's happening. Now, it is... It does feel like a little bit of a downgrade. I kind of like Street View being integrated before. Um, it is kind of funny finding all the map errors... Like, there's actually a blog out there. I, I, I don't have it handy right now. Let's, I'll see if I have it in the notes. No, I don't think I did. Um, there, there, there's actually a blog out there just showing off all the map errors, like the Eiffel pow- Tower disappearing, uh, parts where it changes from, like, fuzzy map, you know, satellite maps to black and white. Like, there's an issue there. But and, and in pretty significant areas, there's the 3D the 3D map where... Uh, where, where the bridges bridges are all wavy, you know, stuff like that. Like, it just seems like there's a little bit of a issue there. I mean, this, this is 1.0. This is typical Apple. Don't use the 1.0 product, right? Yeah, exactly. And the, the thing that everybody is forgetting, because they're comparing it to Google Maps. Remember when Google Maps sucked? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well remember, you know, it was like, oh, MapQuest is the king. Why would I use Google Maps? Or, you know, Google Maps has been going for how long? They've been able to improve. Google Maps. There is today over eight years of development, mm-hmm. plus whatever development they did beforehand. It is impossible to launch something as massive as a mapping service. And what? a lot of people are, are going to say that I'm coming off as an Apple apologist here, but it is impossible. I'm not kidding. Just like it was impossible for Google, it was impossible for MapQuest, and it was apparently because, man, they still suck real bad. Mm-hmm. Impossible for Yahoo. Nobody has been able to say, like, day one are great and even though google maps is eight years old it still sucks in certain ways and in certain places mm-hmm. for instance you talk to somebody in china they're going to tell you that google maps is worthless and incidentally apple maps is great yeah yeah that, that was one of the stories going around because definitely uh, i guess they got their map data for china from somebody really reliable over there one of the best uh, mapping services available here they got it from tom tom yeah I, is it tom tom's fault or is it just the conversion process it's it's a mixture of a bunch of things. Mm-hmm. They're they're also so 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 um, a way that Apple will increase the accuracy of their maps is by people using it. Yeah. So the problem is that because it's broken, people don't want to use it. So then it's kind of poisons itself. People are going to use it no matter what. Yeah, because it, it's the default app. It's what people are going to go to. The navigation is so nice when you use it because it does pop up at the top no matter where you're at. It says a notification that looks a lot different than everything else. It pops up on the lock screen. Um, the 3D map, not so... like I, We don't have it in Pittsburgh. Apparently, you have to be in a big city for them to do the 3D buildings and all that fancy crap. Um, but like, I, I was just like, I was just kind of sitting there like saying, Oh, what cities do this? Miami, of course, New York city has it. And like Cleveland doesn't, Pittsburgh doesn't try, try to pick up a couple other random cities. They're all flat. Uh, so I wonder if that's something that's going to be rolled out. It is really kind of a gimmicky thing in the long run, but it is kind of interesting that I do have like a Google earth built into this thing. And that's really sure. what it is. It's Google earth. Yeah. It's, it's just Google earth. And like, I remember, I mean, let's see, what's the most useful thing I did with Google Maps in 3D? Um, uh, wait, no, I've never actually used it. <laughs> There's nothing functional. It's like, oh, neat, you can see all the hills. I can see Mount Washington when I'm when I'm uh, you know downtown in a 3D mode of this. That's it. Yeah, I mean, that's the gee whiz. Who's using this in a functional functional way? Some some Google Maps. Google Earth stuff, like they have some applications people have built around it with the API that are kind of interesting. But as it is by itself, it's not exactly something that I help to get around with. Right. And it, even if you're looking at, so the comparison would be uh, Google Maps in 3D. 
And everybody says, well, that's pretty good. You know why that's pretty good? Because you as a user have the option to build things in SketchUp and submit them to Google to fix them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I hear from, from Ch- uh, sorry, uh, Brian in the chat room, Devatech. Uh, while I agree with the fact that it is hard to come out with a, a great 1.0, don't advertise it, to advertise it as the greatest thing on Earth. If you need people to use it, you should really tell them it's the greatest thing on Earth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that's marketing. There's definitely a detachment there. Um, I mean, I, I just found like little stuff. You know, it is annoying that the transit isn't in there. But, you know, I did download HubSpot as uh, I think Chilla tossed me the other day. Uh, maybe AJ. No, it's Chilla. Um, and you install it. It is nice, the integration, because they do actually give you the uh, options like you did before for walking in transit. But when you pick them, they refer you to, I, I suppose if I didn't have the app installed, it would say, hey, go to the app store and it'll list a bunch of apps that are compatible with it. Yeah. So that's nice. And actually HubStop, HubSpot, HubStop, whatever it is, uh, it is uh, it really is a lot nicer than what I was doing in uh, Google Maps. Like there was a, when do I need to arrive by? I didn't have that option. Of course, you guys have it on the Android devices. Uh, when I when I put the link, you know, I put the bookmark on to go to, go to Google Maps, you know, in the Safari browser, which is just not as nice, but but you get all the functionality. Hubstop, I'm, Hopstop, I'm sorry, is the is the name of it. Um, but uh, but I mean, really, all the functionality is there. It's just presenting it presented it in a different way. And I think really Google is kind of losing out by all the users not having access readily access to it at this point and not even having their own app ready for this thing. No one knows it's coming. Yeah, and it's, you know, so th- there's the other argument that is like, why did they, why did Apple dump Google Maps so suddenly and not give users the option? Step one in that equation is back to that whole, well, we need people to use it so it doesn't suck kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Step two is that they had to pay money to use Google Maps. They had to pay a lot of money to use Google. And a lot of people were dumping Google Maps in in, in lieu of Open Street Map or something else because of the money thing. Because the API, they did increase the fees on them. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and it's not like, you know it's not like Apple can't afford it or anything like that. But if you consider like the decision of, all right, we are you know incredibly popular. People like us. If we give people a phone with our maps on it. It's going to suck to start with. And to be honest, it doesn't actually suck. That's that whole sensationalism thing. It's not the worst thing. I mean, open, open, open street map was horrible. I, when I first used Waze, it was completely broken to begin with. Like half the stuff wasn't right. It was just, but, but like this situation, more people used it, more people, you know, submitted to it. I think we fixed something on our, uh, in the last few months when we were driving around on Waze and, and it does get fixed and it does get better. You know, stuff was screwed up on Google Maps every once in a while. When you go on a weird back street in Pittsburgh and say, this doesn't connect, you know, Still all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just maps. You're not supposed to rely on it 100 percent and you can't get mad when it doesn't work right. So <laughs> uh, and of course, Apple's hey, you know, saying, hey, please be patient. We're just getting started with them. Yeah, and they are. So even though, you know, they, they showed off, I don't know what the quote is as far as like it being the greatest or not or what they specifically said, but I know they have quote unquote said, please be patient. We're working on it. Mm. Uh, I know that the word is that there is a off like dedicated team that is responding to all of the bug reports for Apple Maps. So they're trying to fix things as fast as they can. And the other thing is, instead of complaining about it and being a dick on the internet, why don't you actually submit a bug report with something in the wrong place? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, the only thing I, I ran into, uh, I, I pulled up, a, I pulled up a uh, address. It was supposed to be on uh, Brownsville Road. I'm like, okay, you know, I started putting it, I started kind of auto correcting it. Uh, the place I intended to go is really not very far away from my house, like probably two miles. It ended up sending me to uh, to uh, uh, South Park. Hmm. Yes. I was late for the wedding. Um, so, it be, again, Brownsville Road, but it didn't complete the proper thing. The proper, like it, it, like, it makes sense to me. It would pop up the thing that would be closer. It's one of those things where I search for a certain thing. It'll put me in a different spot than I would expect Google Maps to do it. It, it seems like the search isn't broken down as well as it used to. It, it, yeah. If you misspell something, you're not getting it. Mm-hmm. Google Maps would always correct it. They were really good about that. Um, so there's a less hand-holding, it feels like, in this program. So, yeah. And it's, but, it, but again, it's new. It's probably something that will come with time. It's just annoying that, you know, the thing that came with it, it feels like my maps got downgraded. It got upgraded and downgraded at the same time. Yeah, 
So um, let's move on. One more feature I'm excited about is, uh, uh, have you been doing panoramas, Rob? I've been doing panoramas for yeah. uh, since like I was like four. <laughs> well, now spill it in. All of us can do it. Here's one I did uh, uh, last week on a shoot uh, with Chachi. See the two Chachis? Ah, uh, uh, I made magic. I made magic with it. Um, so uh, that that that's been my kind of new toy since I upgraded my uh, uh, iPhone 4s. There's there's one of us uh, having pizza last week. Uh, there's Chill on the right with a kind of a flat face, and 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 I don't know what's going over here. Kind of have a demon face going on. So um, did you see? Because um, when I say I've been doing it since I was four, it's because there was a hack where you could turn it on. Oh yeah. Been built into the iOS since four, I think. So this isn't new at all. It's not new in any stretch, but they've been perfecting it the whole time. And it is really smooth because somebody showed off a, at, at the pizza party where I was showing it off there, and those are all from like the first day that he installed it. Um, they were showing me on uh, some, I think it was a Droid or something, uh, uh, somebody at the table there, and, and it does seem like it's a nicer feel to it. It tells you to move up, move down, slow down you know, uh, to, to correct itself. Uh, and, and you get to see, you know, as a go versus a little bar I saw on, on somebody else's phone, you know, whether it be, it was a Samsung or a Droid, I can't recall, but and, and to the whole, like, uh, maps needs time to develop kind of thing point. If you had seen what panoramas was when I could first turn it on, you would, you would burst out laughing. It was amazingly horribly bad. You couldn't like, Unless I put it on a tripod with like a motor, there was no chance you were getting something legible out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, from the chat room, Chill's actually in there. He's saying uh, uh, he actually liked MapQuest prior to iOS 6 due to the voice directions. And actually, yeah, I've been using MapQuest for a while. Uh, but as I said, it, it's it, right now it's my secondary next to Waze because I feel like Waze is more reactive to traffic, which is my biggest <laughs> issue bouncing around the city. Um <laughs> and some other some other anecdotes in there about maps. All right, hey, let's talk about not Apple. All right, how about that, Chach? What? The what? Good morning. Um, all right, what else is going on out there? Um, let's talk about. So, of course, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, you know something. There was a uh, well, a hostage situation. Uh, what was that Thursday? I think it was. Uh, Friday. It was. Friday? Yeah, it was Friday, yeah. Um, where it was, you know, something downtown, uh, well, one person came in, only had one hostage, and was actually updating his Facebook during, yeah. during this, this this endeavor. It got, they ended up, uh, I think they got a subpoena, or they, got, they got some quarter to get his Facebook shut down uh, because it was impeding the process of... Uh, uh, no, the it wasn't, negotiations, it wasn't right? impeding the process. Mm -hmm. People were assholes. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, no. okay. What? Why? What? What was going on? Because there was people on Facebook cheering him on. Okay. Which was counterintuitive to what was trying to be accomplished. Yeah. Because people are stupid. Well, you know, you see a situation like this. Some people are going to jump in and be be douchebags about it. Um, but it, and, I, and I started talking about this on on over on Google Plus, and somebody said that they were on dispatch and heard about somebody that started doing Facebook updates because they were like hiding under the bed from a, a abusive husband or boyfriend or something with the kid didn't want to be on the phone talking to 911 to alert him. So actually updated them through Facebook. I, I think this is going to be, especially you know, as connected we are, we, we always talk about, you know, the things we can do with social media, the positive, et cetera, et cetera. I think as you see more people that are just automatically connected and think of, I want to communicate with people. I'm going to use Twitter, Facebook. You know, that's their new phone. Uh, I think you're going to find more interest, interesting situations like this, you know, where somebody like, you know, like this guy, you know, this crazy guy that, you know, went and did what he did. It, it, you know, he's got his phone with him, so he's going to try to communicate there instead of waiting for his phone call, you know. Um, so, or, or other situations like people in the middle of emergencies and think of different ways to use this because again instead of picking up the phone they're, they're going to pick up the phone to do this because this is what they're going to be used to and you're going to see it more and more over the next few years uh, what do you think about this uh, uh situation here rob um yeah i mean you know it's something we've been kind of looking at for a few years there was when uh when prager had his house broken into and he tweeted about it remember that <laughs> oh yeah that was a few years ago yeah yeah and I, I mean it's been getting closer and closer to that ever since 
So uh, you're right. It's what people are comfortable with. There's a lot of uh, there are a lot of 911 services that support texting. Yeah. Um, and that's just going to become more and more popular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Um, bring it back around to cell phones here. Uh, BlackBerry, uh, uh, let us know how they're going to get back in the game today by showing off BlackBerry 10. Yay. Oh. Yeah, and I was actually, okay, so I mean, they, they announced, I mean, general stuff. Let me pick up, bring up some pictures here so you can see what it looks like. It really just does just look like a Me Too product. It, it, it looks, they're going to have Facebook integration. They're going to have Twitter integration right out of the box when they open this thing. Uh, app submissions are going to begin October 10th. It's it just like, it's just another platform. And even, even they're saying here, uh, uh, <laughs> it looked very similar to an iOS app when they showed off Facebook. Actually, it looks exactly, I would not be able to mistake that. That that looks like it's the iOS app to me. I mean, even, does that look like the uh, Android app there? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So they, they might have just must might have just grabbed that off of it. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty similar. Let me see if guys they're showing off Facebook at this in this article. It looks like um, yeah, they're going to BlackBerry App World. There's there's uh, some of the app stuff. I mean, it just looks like they're really just making a Me Too product. And I actually pulled up an article uh, while uh, Chachi and I were talking before the show. There's an article where um, the Facebook one fit, or one blueberry. Blueberry, Blackberry guy, whatever fruit this is, um, was saying and say, yeah, we're we're well positioned to be number three. We can be number three. <laughs> we're number three. We're number three. <sighs> so, and when asked is. why not pointing for number number one, they say when climbing the mountain, you have to take it one step at a time. Uh, so, Blackberry not shooting high, Rob. Uh, many people need to be fired in the company. What's that? So many people need to be fired in a company. <laughs> Why would you say that? You because, know? It, well, oh. Rob and I don't agree often. Uh, but when we do, uh, I tell you to mark it on the calendar. Mm -hmm. so Is this ahead, one of those? Yeah, go ahead and mark it on the calendar. But when you're releasing something, regardless of how bad it sucks. Kind of like the Apple Maps situation we are just talking about. Tell everyone it is the greatest thing they've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yep. The same with the the new MySpace thing that they're pushing. Everyone knows that MySpace is crap. That's mm -hmm. not going to change. Mm -hmm. But they're pushing it like it's the newest, best social media platform. Yep. So when talking to the general public, BlackBerry should be lying out their rears saying that BlackBerry is the greatest phone that one can have in their pocket. Yeah. Chill, chill is uh, kind of more to that. Chill is in the chat room saying that BlackBerry told them that they aren't releasing uh, the phone before Christmas because they don't want to be lost in the media hype. And they think that they are better off after Christmas after everyone gets their new devices. A really awkward person that walked in the room and they don't want to interrupt anybody's conversation because they feel that everybody else is more important. That's the BlackBerry is on the market right now. Hi, guys. <laughs> I don't want to. That's fine. I'll just be here in the corner by myself. You don't need to look up. It's okay. I'm all fine. I don't need to pick up. Good. Thanks. No, great. I'm, I've got this messenger. I have friends. I, trust me. I have friends. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I don't know. I, I I can't think of. Yeah, again, it's, it's Christmas. Well, it doesn't Brian, even matter. Brian said, is Donald Duck running their PR? Uh, <laughs> Is uh, Brian is saying that the BlackBerry will have Beats Audio? Is that true? Hey, he's been he's been talking about Beats Audio all night. Something about the iPhone five being approved by Chachi and Dr. Dre. So I, I just I think it's just his theme of the night. Being funny, okay. Yeah, but, no, he he's messing with you purely on your hatred of Beats. That's fine. I mean, heard it's made of Beats and and I don't know. The, I'm not even, I can think of so many bad jokes to make right now. I can't even pick one. I mean, yeah, but yeah, it looks like, really, this just looks like an, I'm sorry, it kind of looks like another Android device to me. Maybe because I don't play with a lot of them, you know. I, but everything, it just looks like another phone that does pretty much what everybody else does. <laughs> Chilla says that uh, he hears BlackBerry will have a huge PR thing on the fancy.com. Oh, oh, good. Oh, good. Oh. The fancy. Let's talk about the fancy first. Oh, wait, 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 is there something about the fancy? 
to talk about the fancy dragon. Okay, if there's something to talk about the fancy, sure. How much I hate the fancy. <laughs> Is that all you were going to say about the fancy? Well, I've got a lot more to say about the fancy. Okay. So, you're familiar with my hatred for the fancy. I am familiar with your hatred for the fancy. So, uh, there was a thing that I, that I found on some internet website uh, that was linked to on the fancy, and it was for push on the fancy, right? Okay. You follow? Okay. So there's a picture, big, large, like 800, 600 picture, of the thing on the fancy, and um, it uh, it was uh, it's a belt buckle knife thing. It's it's, it's a cool thing. It's like a double bladed belt buckle knife that you can take out and use as a knife. It also has a little bottle of thing in it. So I'm like, oh, this is fun. It's in my book. So I can for my account on the fancy that I signed up four weeks ago. And and, uh, and I purchased said I am. And then I'm like, oh, well, now I've got the sweet bubba. I should buy a belt that matches the, the width of the of the case for the knife. So uh, I started looking at it. And I can't, I don't, I don't remember what it was called on the fancy. So I just typed into the internet, you know, knife belt buckle or whatever. And I found another company selling the exact same thing. I'm looking at it. And then I, I noticed that thumbnail on this website is used on the fancy as thumbnail for the product, but the large image for the product is not the same thing. Sold by a different company, different size, it doesn't have a bottle opener, it has some name engraved on the blade. So I, I contact the fancy to complain about the horrible things they're doing. And I just say, like, which one is it? Is it the thing in the giant picture that everybody expects that they're getting when they give you money? Or is it the little tiny 100 by 150 pixel, like, photocopied image from this other website? And, uh, and they email me back pretty shortly and they say, we contacted the merchant and, uh, they ran out of the, uh, available item in the large photo and they replaced it the item in the thumbnail photo. How do you feel about that? Wow, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. That's, yeah. Uh, it's like, it, it's almost as if I gave somebody money for one thing and they gave me something else that I didn't ask for. That, seems, that sounds like pretty much what they did. That's pretty exactly what they did. So, for being on my list of things that I hate to being on the list of things that I hate a little bit more than the things on the list. Now, is that the fancies part uh, uh, problem, or is it just the merchant not accurately doing what they're supposed to be doing? I mean, I, I you know, I could have a problem with somebody on eBay, you know, that isn't using the service appropriately. I think it falls on both uh, situations here. Okay, okay, fancy should be backing it up. Yeah, absolutely. And they, are. And they said, like, if you're not happy with what you're actually going to get, we will be happy to uh to re- to make sure that the merch should be new. Oh. Now, now the, the, the fancy I don't know we talked about it a little I've really just been on it, you know, fancying it, liking things. But really it is kind of it's, it's like an Etsy or something. It's it's kind of like an open store sort of concept, right? Mm-hmm. Like like it's not just like Pinterest where I just put whatever on that I found entertaining and I know they they kind of want you to buy things via it too. Uh, but this thing was more even more pushed on products you can purchase. So, um, yeah, that's not cool. That's not cool. But yeah, I'm always weird going through like a third party thing like that, you know. So, um, yeah, fancy. Uh, you know, what else is fancy. The news MySpace. I know we mentioned it here previously, uh, uh, briefly, but I guess Justin Tim- Timberlake came out. They have a new video. He's bringing sexy back. They're bringing sexy back the MySpace. Look at this thing. It well, it's not MySpace. That's for sure. It's going to be a complete overhaul. Oh my God, they need it. Um, it's, it looks like it's going to be very slidey. Um, I feel like I need a touch screen anything in order to operate this. I don't like it already. You don't like it already? No. It, well, well, that looks like Google Plus. There, that looks like a mix between Google Plus on the iPad and Pinterest. Yeah. Oh, good. Justin's got his his page up there. I mean, it's very visual, but this is where a lot of things are going uh, these days. I think Justin is taking his. Uh his acting role as Sean Parker too far. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Just because you play an internet mogul on TV, the, the very visual search there, music videos with a bunch of crap on top of it. Um, 
AJ uh, just got an ad for MySpace in the uh, stream. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, it's fancy. I don't know if anybody's going to care enough to go back to this thing. I don't though. like it. I, I mean, it, it, why, I, why it am on, I going to go to another service like I'm this? I'm putting it on Rob's list of things he doesn't like. Okay, Rob. <laughs> I don't even need to look at it. You don't even need to look at it? <laughs> so, from like, the, uh, from what I see on the very tiny window on my screen, that of you showing off my face, it looks a lot like Windows 8. It does. Yeah, that's why I feel like there should be a touch interface in order to deal with this thing. Look at this thing. I it just, I can't. Has there ever been a service that's, that's properly resurrected th themselves? Uh, no. No, no, no. Why don't we keep trying, guys? Hey, you know? remember that time we offered them like 140 bucks? Man, they should have taken it. I know. Man, they should have taken it. Um, I was completely going to light it on fire. There's one big race that's my thing. Can you think of a social media ask? And not like trying to be social media really hard because nobody really wants that in sharing music necessarily. Like, you want it to be vaguely social. <laughs> in that, I know what Sorg is and, and maybe I like Sorg as a person. I said maybe I didn't say that I do. Maybe that I like Sorg as a person. And I respect his taste of music, and I want to know what he's listening to. Then it can tell me these things, and I can explore them. So there's, currently, there's RDO, which, let's be honest, is a little clutchy. There's, um, what's that other thing that everybody uses? Spotify? Yeah. I, which, is, which is decent, but still not too social. And then there's, uh, there's Bandcamp, I think, and there's, um, a handful of other things. Nobody's really doing it well, so there's still that option of somebody being able to do it well. So, hypothetically, the perfect combination might be RDO buys MySpace, it buys RDO, or something like that, where you combine the effort of having all the music that you want and this place where it's a more visual interface. And it's definitely, MySpace is, a, is definitely not shooting to be um, the destination that it used to be. It, it is not like Facebook eclipsed it. Now you can log in. Like the first screen they show in this video is you logging in via Twitter or Facebook, which I think is already there. Um, so, I mean, at least they've given up on that aspect of it. So they are fully reinventing themselves as we're the place you go for this thing, for the entertainment thing, you know. And I don't know what they're doing that they got. They got like I, I started getting I don't know when I like these things, but I, I, I keep getting new messages about like The Office having a new episode up or something like that or Saturday Night Live. Uh, so so NBC bought into this thing, which makes sense because Justin Timberlake's always on SNL, I guess. Maybe there's some some hooks in there. Um, but I don't know. It, it's it's another thing for us to laugh at. Um, yeah. I want to try it. it. It looks spiffy, you know. I'm not trying it. I, well, I want to see. Well, okay, I want to use my accounts that are already in MySpace. <laughs> Maybe I'll resurrect all the old band accounts, you know. Um, no, 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 no. Well, they're still I'll, they're, they're I, still there. What's I that? want to how well it loads on the iPad is what I want. <laughs> That'll be the important thing, right? They already have an app on the iPad for the for MySpace. They've had it for a bit, actually. Um, maybe that would be better than using MySpace itself at this point. Uh, so this is another interesting thing that came up. And, you know, I, I do a lot of... No, it's my turn. It's your turn? Yeah. Okay, it's your <clears> turn. What <throat> do you want to talk about, Shachi? Loot Crate Day. It's Loot Crate Day. Da, 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 da. Now, 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 he got Loot Crate. This is the second Loot Crate he's gotten. Yes. LootCrate.com. We yes. didn't say it real clearly last time. I, uh... I, I decided that I would subscribe to the service and see if it held up for a couple months, and it completely did. Um, this month's theme is 8-Bit uh, Gaming. Okay. Um, no, you can't get this box. Uh, it's gone. <laughs> so if you want to sign up for the service just because you want this box, you can't. Um, but it came with, they're sticking with the uh, limited art theme. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, describe it for the audio listeners. Yeah, it's uh, a picture of three cartoon Mr. T's. Uh, it says basic T, and it's just a normal Mr. T. A graphic T, and he's naked. And then a retro T, and he's dressed up as a Mr. T Mario. Uh, came with a power-up Mario energy drink. Which I saw two Instagrams of this can, like, right next to each other from different people. Uh, now I know why. Oh, uh, that's what that's from. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, Legend of Zelda tin with mints. Nice. Little, little shield, little high roll shield there. Uh, a test tube full of radium energy powder. I haven't so, tried it yet. So I sticking know. the energy stuff in there, well, you yeah, know. It's for nerds. Yep. We like our energy. Uh, a little uh, Mario pin. A 20-sided die. <clears throat> 8-bit sunglasses. Now, you're looking for blue ones, though, right? Yeah, I, I'm looking for blue ones to match my uh, 8-bit tie. Okay. But they're they're really cool. And a Mario mustache. What? There you go. So it it, de- it definitely keeps up. Hey, with babe, the, this uh, is this is around twenty bucks a, a month for for doing this thing. Yeah. And did you get any coupons or anything this time? Uh, yeah, it came on the back of the Mister T art. Oh, okay, it's um twenty five dollars off a commission art piece. Nice. So, yeah, it, it's definitely worth the uh, the twenty bucks a month. Awesome. Still, and you can check that out at lootcrate <coughs> uh, AJ says snort it. I, I presume to the stuff I, in the test tube. I thought about it. <laughs> of course he did. And uh, then I was like, uh, that's probably a really bad idea. And then I thought about it some more. Because, <laughs> you know, once I think something's a bad idea, it kind of makes me want to do it more. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I, I'm not going to snort it. Uh, mainly because I don't have a mirror or a razor blade to make lines with. <laughs> these, these are the reasons, really? Oh, yeah. All yeah, right. You can fix those reasons, you know. I mean, if that's all that's keeping you back, we could get you a mirror. Maybe. I don't think Sword can get me a mirror and a razor in seven minutes. <laughs> There's other people in this house. Also, um, I need a... Uh, oh, I have a dollar bill. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say I need a, a paper currency of some kind, but I have paper money in my wallet. So. Awesome. Awesome. All right. On that note, let's go ahead and get wrapped up here then. Um, no, you had something no, else to cover. No, I don't cover. want to talk about it now. All right, we'll talk about it. All right, I, well, like I was saying, I do, I do a lot of intro to social media kind of courses. Actually doing one tomorrow night uh, out in export. Never mind. What? What? You were only talking about this so you could plug it. What? No, no. Uh, no, yeah, really. Are the people here going to go to an intro to Facebook? You don't. You never know. The people listening really need you, Facebook you, help at this you point. You never know. No, no, AJ doesn't have a Facebook. Ba- yeah, account. he doesn't. So he can come out. He to might need intro from, to Facebook from Carolina. And, um, but apparently, uh, and I always say like when you use private messages and stuff on Facebook, don't completely trust it. You know, because I don't. I just don't have the trust in Facebook to keep everything pirate private that i want to be private right uh well it looks like it was right because apparently people were uh saying that uh, uh private messages have have been appearing publicly and i believe these were uh they said their private messages from 2007 and 2008 were showing up in their timeline <laughs> yeah yeah it was first uh, the re- series of reports were coming out of france including one from metro france and le nouvelle observateur that's my French that speaking. Good. Yes. Does that work for you? Great. Um, so uh, they're working on a small number of users because uh, raised concerns after they were mistakenly believed to be private messages appearing in their timeline. Uh, Fred Wol- Wolins of Facebook Policy Communications said in a statement, our engineers are investigating these re- have investigated these reports and found that the messages were older wall posts that had been visible uh, on the user's p- profile pages. Facebook is satisfied that there have been no breach of user privacy. Um, I was going to say, like, what this really reeks of is when your parents are like, I don't know what all this is going on here. And you're like, Mom, you, you click something. I get it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't, it, it has, it, there's a user action, and then something happens, and you did something wrong, and now there's a thing. So people on Facebook are just like, I didn't put that there. No, you totally put that there. Good job. Yeah, yeah. So so that was a bit of a Facebook scare. I, I still don't trust Facebook to keep those private, though. Like, I just feel like too much stuff gets turned on and off randomly <laughs> in privacy, that I've seen, I, I I don't I don't trust them to keep all that stuff straight. You know, it's too convoluted. I filled my private messages with pictures of penises. Oh, leaked out. It's just it's just a big. You can't tell what's real and what's not. 
Yeah, it, it, when I say private messages, like the actual like one-on-one -on -one messaging, I don't worry as much about. Maybe I should. Uh, I, I worry about that as much as you know direct messaging on Twitter or IMing or anything like that is. Um, sorry, something randomly just fell from the ceiling. <laughs> Got it. Uh, but, but, uh, you know, I, I don't trust the ones where it says only my friends see this or only my, you know, one person sees it kind of like circling in, in Google, like that seems more clear cut than, than what Facebook does. Um, cause there's somebody who's like, oh yeah, I privatized all my, my account. You can't see anything on my, on my, on my wall or anything like that. And I'm like, then why can't I completely see it? And we had to walk through, okay, you didn't do this. You didn't do this. You didn't do this. It's not clear for people. You know, the, the average person, that's not like every time I show them how to do it, they're like, how do you know how to do all this stuff? It's like, well, I pay attention and, and you know, and, and take the time to learn it, you know, and a lot of people don't just say they don't have time to do that stuff. They're getting on Facebook thinking they're doing the right privacy things and completely leaving themselves open. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, it's just too convoluted. I feel sorry for anybody starting Facebook now. Yeah. Yeah. Every time, every time, it's like, I apologize. This is so much easier, like, four years ago when I joined. Um, by the way, joined in uh, January of 2007, I discovered today. When I was looking for some old stuff. Um, so, uh, so yeah, with that, anything anything else you guys want to raise before we get out of here? Uh, okay, uh, going, going, gone. Uh, all right, Rob De La Creta, he's at robjdlc.com. Doing things. Iontank.com, also doing things. Yeah, Iontank. Or I'm, yeah, Iontank.com. Um, oh, shut camp, which we should also talk about. What's that? Iontank will be coming to PodCamp, which we should also mention. Yes, PodCampPittsburgh.com. Uh, for all the information on that, um, I hope to get a blog up there here shortly. Um, you, you, you can. You, there's also an evening with PodCamp that's going on next Wednesday, October 3rd. Uh, it's going to be a panel of uh, media people. I think it's being held down at the Post Gazette building, actually. So uh, kind of like a meeting of the uh, old media with uh, with uh, 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 social media uh, kind of thing. Uh, so there's going to be, I guess, some uh, some some paper, you know, dead tree people. There's going to be some uh, uh, TV people, I think, are going to be on the panel as well. Again, all that information is going to be at podcamppittsburgh.com. And we'll be doing that stuff. I just submitted uh, a, uh, a We're Still Here panel. That's going to be a Wrestling Mayhem show. It looks like Berg's Eye View and the comic book Pit represented on that. And plus a bunch of other good stuff. Uh, in those sessions should be released shortly, I think, for the public to see what's going on. So, is there anything you wanted to throw out for it there, Rob? No, not really. That cover everything? Yep. Good. Uh, and Chachi, he's over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. He's at Chachi Says on Twitter. Yep. Did you have an announcement coming up or something like that? Next week. Next week? Yeah. Do I know what the announcement is? You should. I should? Yeah. Oh, okay. We've only been talking about it all week. Oh, it's that thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 sorry, I would be paying attention, but I'm too busy laughing at the troll in the chat room. There's a troll in the chat room? Yeah. And I closed the just at the wrong time. Hey, look, there's a troll in the chat room. Okay. Um, I, uh, it's just... So, yeah, he was entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm over at, of course, OrgatronMedia.com, where you can find all the stuff, including a newly released Unsung with Chachi and Squirrels. There are squirrels in the episode. That squirrel was there after is, me. There is definitely a squirrel in the episode, so the go check episode. that out. Um, at least one section. I didn't go back to see how many times he showed up, nice. but he's definitely back there hanging out saying hi. That's awesome. So uh, so go check that out at circuitronmedia.com, pittsburghonvideo.org for that show as well. Um, and also uh, my blog is over at uh, sorgatron.com. You can drop a line to us here. Contact at awesomecast.com. Find out more about us at awesomecast.com. Well, as much as you can until I fix the thing. Um, uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at me. At Awesomecast, that's later tonight. Wrong show. Uh, <laughs> we're on Facebook, we're on Google Plus, tag us AC120 <laughs> for this episode for any conversation related to that. And, uh, and join us here every uh, Tuesday around about uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com where you can hop in the chat room like all these guys, like Brian, Chilla, uh, the Wrestle Revolution, uh, Silent Ninja, Juggalo John, Wrestle Fan, AJ, and others. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome.